Okay, good morning everyone and hope you all had a good weekend, a good a refreshing and restful weekend and ready to battle it out this week. Uh, welcome to class. Uh, before we begin class, can one of you please lead us in prayer? Abhinas, can you lead us in prayer please? Oh, yes, ma'am. Okay, let's pray. Our gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you for this time, Lord. This morning, we just to praise you, worship you, Lord. We glorify your name, Father God. As we're going through this day, Father God, help us, Lord Jesus. And we ask you, Lord Jesus, that heavenly wisdom and languages, Father God, help us, Lord Jesus, Father God, to understand, Lord. As Selah is going to teach, Lord, we submit her to your mighty hand, Father God. And all the students, we submit to your hand. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Abhinas. Uh, good to have uh, Kung back in class after a short break. We're just so glad that uh, you could join us back, Kung. Welcome back. Okay, so uh, last Wednesday in our last class, we were, uh, uh, you know, we saw that ministering to children was a priority to uh, Jesus. The disciples uh, did not think that, you know, children should be ministered to, but Jesus did. Uh, he made time to minister to uh, children and hence oh, we see that or oh, we can derive that you know ministering to children should be a high priority for us as a church today uh, and we also looked at a few more reasons why ministering to children is important uh, today we look at uh, the real essentials in children's ministry and then we'll move on to chapter two, where we look at, if we have time, we look at the developmental needs uh, of children. Okay, so today, in today's class, we're going to look at the real essentials in children's ministry. And then uh, if we have time, we'll move on to chapter two, where we look at the develop developmental needs uh, of children. So what are the real essentials in children's ministry? There, there are four. Uh, essential foundations uh, for all church-based uh, ministry to children. Uh, I've taken these ideas that were uh, inspired by, uh, by the free training at Children's Desiring God. Uh, also, this uh, what we're going to look at today about the, the four essential foundations for church-based ministry to children uh, will also help um, one of our online students who, you know, um, put this question up in the discussion uh, discussion forum, he asked, how can we invest in children for creating the godly heart in them? So this is also uh, just to help um, uh, our um, uh, e-learning student who asked this question. I also would like to welcome all our e-learning uh, students uh, for this class as well. So. Um, what are the four essential foundations for all church-based ministry? Of course, there's just four that uh, I'm going to be, um, uh, you know, uh, pointing out to, but you all can add to the list uh, and you all can, uh, you know, um, you can work on this uh, and you can add more essential foundations if you would wish to. So first one is uh, children's ministry must be God-centered. Uh, this means that in our teaching, uh, we need to emphasize uh, who God is, uh, which is talking about his greatness, his power, his nature, his attributes, um, and his character. Because we want children uh, to know who this God is. They, we, we want children to uh, know his nature, his attributes, his character, uh, so that they can they are able to understand him. Uh, they're able to relate to him better. They're able to understand his ways, his doing in their lives, uh, what he requires of them, what he wants from them. Uh, and we also want uh, you know our children to see how uh, powerful, strong, big, uh, faithful, loving, uh, you know, uh, good, majestic, uh, and, you know, satisfying our God is. So why are we basically um, going to be talking about his greatness, his nature, his attributes and character? Uh, why is it important for children to see how strong, uh, you know, how uh, great, how big, how powerful, 
how faithful, how loving, how good or majestic uh, and satisfying our God is? What, what do you think? Why do you think it's important for us to teach them all of this about God? Any thoughts? You can unmute your mics and speak or you can even type it in the chat section. Why do you think it's important to teach children about God's greatness, His nature, His attributes, character, how loving, faithful, good and satisfying our God is? Yes, say. Um, I, I, I think one thing about uh, teaching children at an infant age is that whatever you put into their lives is like a seed. So sowing that seed of the greatness of God, the awesomeness of God, is something they get to grow with later on that would be a bedrock and a foundation for them when in their adult years. So first of all, it's a seed you're sowing that will later germinate. And then you give them a confidence they can always rely on, and that's that God confidence knowing that they have a father who loves them, knowing that there's a God who is greater than all the issues in the world. So just having that at the back of their mind that irrespective of whatever goes on as they grow in life, they always have a confidence in God that God is great. He's done many miracles in the past. He's delivered the Israelites from you know, the Egyptians, all those stories of God's greatness. Then they'll be able to translate that into their experiences as they grow. So it gives them God confidence and it's a seed that will later germinate later on in their adult time uh, years. I think those are the reasons why we should teach them. Yes, well said. Thank you, Say. Anyone else? Anyone else would like to share your thoughts on this? Yes, say go ahead. Uh, and one more thought, sorry. And then uh, again, it's it it's 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 wonderful when, particularly from the family cycle circle, when parents actually teach their kids about God. They're hearing God from their parents, and then the church also adds in their own effort to see that children learn about God. Why? Because they will also one day have to leave their parents. Maybe it could be secondary school, it could be university. And there's so many ideologies and very, very um, disturbing teachings on different things that are contrary to our faith and all that. It goes against scriptures, goes against the truth, you know. So them learning about all these things early, catching them early, letting them know that this is the truth, this is what is actually what we're supposed to believe, helps them to be able to decipher what is false what is not true, what they're not supposed to believe, what they're supposed to erase from their minds, what they're supposed to, uh, they basically have a filter within their minds that, no, this is not what my parents taught me. This is not what I learned in Sunday school from my teacher. Whatever teachers are teaching them, contrary in school or what they hear from their friends or what they hear on the media, they have this filter in their mind based on all that they've been taught about God and all that he expects us to do. To be able to to be able to distinguish what is truth and what is false, basically. Yes, thank you very much for that thought as well that you've added. Anyone else? Ma'am, can I share? Yes, sure, Rupa. Yes. Uh, in the chill, especially. I have shared with the class previously also in the last semester uh, that uh, we have started uh, during the third COVID, ma'am, before uh, parents were very worried that their children would get the COVID. And we had a one all night prayer. After that, God put it in my heart saying this verse in uh, Psalm 8, chapter saying that on the praises of the children god will fill build a fortress on based on that verse god has spoken to me through that verse and from the next day i have shared it with the parents 
and we have started um, all the children would come on zoom around 6 30 in the morning so they will come with a praise they'll uh, it's not uh, we don't uh, tell them sing this and sing that but they come with a praise they praise god uh, they, they learn a verse and also they pray for their friends who have not been uh, who does not know the lord something like that in the beginning i used to teach them continuously uh, on topics on faith like that on faith they used to learn the verses after that i have uh, introduced them to the the torch lighters they, it's a very beautiful resource in right now media they have uh, on the missionaries lives nice bible study and how to um, uh, create uh, awareness at the same time interest in the children through the activities we used to do that and from that day i don't even remember the date ma'am but from that day till today these children come every day at 6 30 in the morning and it is going on and now we don't share a story in the morning because there is no time but they praise they sing and uh, they learn a verse every day they have finished 119 psalm the, they wow. have uh, learned it now they started chapter by chapter uh, verse by verse they are learning proverbs now so but i have seen a lot of difference in the children they are growing closer to god some of the children even while they are traveling their parents say they are uh, praising god in the spirit and they have um, recorded some of those song said sent me i'm really feel this is not from me it is from god because it is not easy for children to come every morning and without uh, anyone um, calling them maybe their parents wake them up sometimes because they're from all age groups but they come every morning and i see a difference and a lot of deliverance anointing in their families and also in this children's life and it's so powerful ma'am i have seen it uh, and i'm praying uh, uh, every day i pray lord show us how to uh, teach them your ways how to uh, draw their hearts close to you that they will fall in love with you and walk in your ways not because i am asking them it should not come out of compulsion but it should come from their heart their heart should be entwined with you like david that they would love to walk in your ways so that's uh, what god is doing in our midst i just wanted to share ma'am thank you thank you rupa so encouraging and um, just god bless your work and bless those children just seeing the hunger and thirst and the desire they have to uh, you know to just worship god learn about him uh, and also, you know, just learn his word and uh, the word that is just being sown in their heart is just seeing uh, uh, that's a transformation that is bringing that's that's bringing about in their lives, uh, in their family life, in their um, in their relationship with others and how they are uh, viewing things, looking at things and their behavior as well. So it's just the word of God that is sown in their heart or the word of God that is just so uh, implanted in their hearts and minds that is um, you know bearing fruit that is bringing about uh, transformed lives that's just bringing about uh, lives that are being changed into more of uh, being more christ-like in nature so thank you rupa for sharing that um, so we were basically for those of you joined uh, class uh, a bit uh, late today we are looking at uh, uh, the four essentials uh, in children's ministry the four essential foundations for all church-based yeah. ministry to children um, the first one we said is children's ministry must be God-centered, uh, which means, you know, we need to teach children about um, uh, uh, or emphasize, you know, uh, when we're teaching them any narratives or whatever curriculum, the topics, uh, teach about God's greatness, his nature, his attributes, uh, because we want to see, um, uh, you know, we want children to see how strong, big, faithful, loving, uh, majestic, and satisfying um, 
God is. Okay, so I just uh, open up, uh, uh, you know, for students to answer this question. Why is it important for our children to see or to know God's nature, his character, his attributes? Uh, why should they know that God is loving and faithful, uh, uh, you know, or uh, and good and say, you know, he said that um, they are like a seed and, uh, you know, they're growing. So all of this is, you know, will help them uh, when they grow up uh, to fall back. It will give them God confidence um, uh, to build their lives on, to confide in God, to put their faith and trust in God. Uh, so just picking up from what Sei said, yes, you know, they are like the seed and the seed needs the right environment, uh, the right, uh, you know, uh, soil, uh, water, nutrition for the seed to grow into a plant and then into a tree and to bear fruit. So, uh, you know, children are like that seed and uh, what is the right environment or uh, you know this right soil the uh, the 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 uh, you know the, the the water that they need the uh, uh, min the minerals or you know uh, uh, that the seed needs for it to grow um uh, you know is is who God is, is his nature, his attributes, his character. Uh, that is the right environment uh, that that seed requires so that when they are able to understand the greatness of God, they're able to see his nature, who he is, what he has done, his power, then, you know, uh, it builds in uh, them, uh, you know, I was just looking for the uh, word fertilizer, the right fertilizer the seed needs is, you know, who God is, his nature and what he does. Uh, so, you know, uh, that builds in them God confidence from a very, very um, young age. And, uh, you know, at a very young age, they're learning to trust in God because children trust uh, anyone very easily, uh, you know, in the very formative years of their uh, uh, life. That is what is the childlike nature that uh, we uh, saw uh, last week in our class, you know, um, uh, the uh, God values that, the childlike faith, the childlike confidence. So uh, at the early age, when they're experiencing God, when they are praying, they're seeing answers, they know that God is a prayer answering God. Um, they, they experience God's help in their studies or his protection or, um, you know, his uh, strength to go through uh, uh, the challenges they face or the difficulties they face. Uh, it's all just, you know, giving them the right environment um, uh, for them to grow in their relationship with God. So when they're growing up, they automatically are just confiding in God. They're trusting in God. They fall back on him. Uh, they know that he is there. Uh, even if things happen that is... Um, uh, that, you know, is very, very disappointing or sad in their lives, they will not go away from God. They will not go away from their faith. Uh, they would not think that God does not love them. Uh, God does not care for them because all of these things, the Holy, uh, the, the experiences in their past, the Holy Spirit can remind them and it it will be that environment in which even if Satan is attacking them, they can just, you know, they can just grow, uh, they can continue to grow uh, flourishing like the tree that's planted by streams of water because its root is you know, is is grounded in uh, the right environment near the water, the right soil, uh, you know, and then that tree is uh, evergreen, it's bearing fruit, it does not, uh, its leaves does not wither it, and all uh, 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 they do, they will prosper because they're just trusting in God, even in times when they lack, you know, they know that God is a God who can provide supernaturally, just like he parted the Red Sea, just like he... Um, heal blind Bartimaeus, just like he provided mana, just like he provided water. So all of these, even as we think it's just narratives that we are telling them, but, you know, it's important to these narratives, just not to narrate stories to children, but bring out the deep theological truths in the sense that bring out 
uh, the nature of God. Uh, so let me just give you an example. Now, one of the uh, uh, you know best stories that uh, all of us will narrate to children is uh, how uh, David killed Goliath. Okay, so you know all we can say is you know just um, how David happened to go to the battlefield, uh, how he heard Goliath throw the challenge, um, and how he was. Um, uh, you know, he was uh, willing to uh, go and fight Goliath and all of those details you can just share with them. But, you know, if you want to really bring out the nature of God uh, from this narrative, uh, you know, then uh, we can say that you now we can throw these questions to children. Now, you know, David was who was david he was just a shepherd boy was he a trained soldier no now why did all of these soldiers who were there you know and uh, goliath was throwing this challenge for 40 days and uh, you know none of them came forward to fight goliath why was a small boy a shepherd boy you know willing to fight goliath okay so then you know children will think and uh, what does uh, uh, David tell uh, Saul when he says, you're only a young boy, you're not being trained in battle. He says, you know, he says his God helped him to kill a lion and a bear with his bare hands and he will help him, you know, uh, fight and, uh, uh, and overtake a uh, Goliath. So here we, 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 we're teaching children, uh, you know, God's nature that he's a God who protects a God who sees, so we can say, you know, David is in the wilderness, he's all alone there uh, in the wilderness for many days, he goes away from his family, uh, you know, uh, wild animals can attack him, can attack his sheep, but all along, you know, David trusted that God can protect him, guard him, uh, you know, he used to sing songs to God, he used to worship God, in those days they didn't have books, you can tell children, so all he did was just sing and worship God, uh, just have a, you know, communicate with God, speak to him, because there's no one else to speak to, he can't speak to the sheep, you know. And um, uh, and this gave him that confidence. Uh, so children, you know, when you put your, you, you can bring out the learning when you trust in God with simple things. You know, what are some of the problems that you're going through? The children can tell you. Of course, the older children will not, but you can call out a few um, challenges that they face and say, you know, you know, God can do this when He can He can do this for. Uh, uh, David, he can do this for you. He can protect you. He can help you. And that is the confidence that that little David had. And David was, you know, a very young boy at that time. Uh, and he was willing to take up uh, this challenge of fighting Goliath, even though he was not a soldier, because he trusted not in his strength that he could kill a lion and a bear, but he said his God can help him. So children, whatever, you know, uh, mountains, whatever difficulties, what, how, however big or small, you know, you're not able to remember things in your studies. Uh, you can just call out some instances, you know, God is greater than all that. He can just help you because he's willing and more than willing to help you. He's there for you. Uh, you know, he's your shield. He's your protector. He's your very present help in time of trouble. Uh, you can share, uh, you know, scripture passages with them, help them to see it. And then, you know, uh, again, when we're uh, talking about same David and Goliath when he goes to uh, fight uh, Goliath you know Goliath says am, am I a dog you've come with your stick and stones and you know um, and then we can say what David said and what Goliath said you know the birds of the air will eat your flesh blah 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 and all those things uh, but you know you, if you want to bring out some theological truth what did David say he says you've come to me to fight again uh, fight against me with your javelin and your sword but i come to you in the name of the lord the god of israel so we can pass over and continue with the story but we can stop and say you know what was uh, uh, what was david's weapon was not a sword or a shield or his armor or his stones or his sling or his confidence but the name of the lord the god of israel so you can talk about how god's name is so powerful that you know uh, the name of jesus uh, demon shudder and shiver and you know the name of jesus um uh, uh, he, uh, people are healed, people are delivered, people uh, receive wholeness. Uh, so, you know, just talk about the name of Jesus. That is the theology that or the greater truths that we're bringing uh, in the stories. We can just narrate the story and pass out. But, you know, we are just bringing in a, 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 a 
more of who God is, what He does, and just you know dwelling on that, helping them to see. So they they're, uh, they're able to see that name of Jesus is not something that they just use. You know, oh Jesus, help me. Oh geez, you know, uh, like a slang. Uh, but it name of Jesus is so powerful, and when they speak the name of Jesus, you know, they need to have that faith and believe that what they're speaking, they are going to see. So we're teaching children all of this at a very, very um, young age. I'll just give you another example. Uh, you know, of um, Zacchaeus. You know, um, now why did Zac Jesus stop at that tree and look up and tell Zacchaeus? You know. Uh, uh, come down, uh, you know, I'm coming to your house. Uh, and was very excited. He took Jesus. Why was Zacchaeus excited? You know, because nobody cared about him. Nobody wanted to do anything with him. Nobody related to him because he's a tax collector. He was a cheater, cheating them of their money. Uh, but you know, Jesus goes to Zacchaeus's house and just to, you know, uh, make the story more interesting. So maybe uh, I once I said, you know, uh, Jesus, uh, Zacchaeus provided Jesus, uh, uh, you know, burgers, and pizza and, uh, you know, Coke and biscuits and cake. And, you know, and one child told me that, uh, uh, um, you know, auntie, we're not supposed to eat junk food. <laughs> and I said, yeah, that's right. Jesus never ate any of those junk food. Uh, you know, and it was so hilarious and so funny I said but you know yeah, when when people come to our homes we offer them all this but Jesus did not eat all of that because he knows it's not good for his health <laughs> you know I didn't anticipate what was coming but uh, kind of brought in a lesson that we should not be eating junk food follow Jesus's example uh, but you know the uh, and then after you know five minutes uh, Jesus didn't speak anything but Zacchaeus just started telling Jesus all about the bad things that he was doing. Now, I asked, I asked children, you know, why uh, the sudden change? Was he just acting? Uh, I don't think Zacchaeus would act because he wouldn't want Jesus to know the bad things that he was doing. Um, you know, uh, and Jesus did not uh, mention it. So Zacchaeus must be glad. Oh, thank God. I thought Jesus is coming to my house to teach me a lesson, to tell me, you know, how to be good, how not to cheat people. Since he's not said anything, maybe he doesn't know. So let me not bring it up. But why did Zacchaeus do that? You know, why did he say, OK, and it was not something he was acting out. But he says, you know, you sit here, Jesus. I'm going to go back and give back everybody you know, four times of what I've taken and all of those things and he did that you know uh what was this real transformation so we then you know i bring in this whole thing about how we keep saying sorry uh, to god and we we say god uh, i receive you as my uh, my uh, into my heart but then we go back and do the same things uh it's it's not just uh, you know a complete uh, 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 surrender of our lives. We hold back things. Uh, uh, you know, uh, why was this total transformation, this change uh, that came about in um, in in Zacchaeus's life? So, you know, uh, I just say the very presence of Jesus in Zacchaeus's home, you know, just made him aware of all his bad things that he was doing, uh, you know, made him feel guilty because till this point in his life, he never felt guilty about anything that he did. You know, uh, now he feels guilty. Uh, he feels the need to change, uh, you know, uh, to recon be reconciled with people, reconcile back to God. And all of those things. So, you know, we can say, children, the very presence of Jesus in our lives uh, would bring about that change. So, the children are thinking, you know, if Jesus is in my life, then, you know, uh, all of these bad things I won't be doing, you know, or um, some of the challenges that I'm having, the difficulties that I'm having, uh, you know, speaking bad words or fighting with my friends or disobeying my parents or back counseling, all of these things are. Um, you know, not things that is going to overpower me, but it's going to give me the freedom to get over it and get done with it and, you know, change and be transformed. So we're saying the very presence of Jesus in Zacchaeus's house, you know, changed him. So the very presence in of Jesus in your life can do wonders. It can, you know, then you can just point out things. So just using these two uh, narratives, uh, from the Bible to see how we can talk about not just the story and leave it as such, you know, uh, 
but bring in the uh, the deeper truths, the theological truths about God, what He can do, uh, just His name, His presence, how He's there to help, uh, and all of that. So we just, you know, by uh, by bringing in all of these theological truths, we're just uh, helping children to experience God, His nature, His power, His greatness, His attributes at a very young age, uh, uh, to experience Him. Okay, uh, like Psalms 34 verse 8 says, Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the man who takes refuge in uh, Him. So when children are able to taste God at a very young age, you know it you know it builds up their love for things from a very young age if the children don't like a specific vegetable curry uh, person or son it it lasts for you know for their life long it does not going to change you know um, so the way they experience god at a very young age is going to build up in the future so it's good for us to not just narrate these narratives or just teach them this this theological truths could get them to experience it or apply it in their um, life. So when they experience God in such ways, they develop a long lasting desire for him, you know. Um, and so when times of trouble, uh, you know, they will come, they will take refuge in him, they put their faith and trust in uh, God. The second thing is children's ministry must be Bible saturated. You know, um, it's important for us to uh, 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 you know, tell children to carry their Bibles to church. They don't even uh, nowadays see their parents carrying because we all go digital, use our mobiles, but still good to carry the Bibles. Uh, you know, we at our children's church, at all people's church, you know, we tell children that they every Sunday they have to carry three things, which is very important, their Bibles, uh, you know, and uh, their water bottles and uh, their uh, uh, offerings three important things so it's important that you know they carry their bibles they have a bible and even if you're teaching them a narrative or a story whatever you know get them to open it so they know where uh, Zacchaeus story is found they know where uh, David and Goliath story is found they won't uh, found they won't know uh, they may not know the books of the bible but just getting them to open will also know uh, you know the which books are in the old testament which books are in the new testament uh, you know uh, also get them to read from their bibles you know uh, just get them acquainted to read from their bibles um, and also you know teach them how to apply the truths that they're learning uh, from about God, about his nature, uh, 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 you know, what he's asked us to do in their everyday uh, life. So at the end of the uh, lesson, no, just don't say, okay, let's just close our eyes and, and thank God for helping David that, and thank God that he's helped us, uh, uh, you know, and he's going to help us fight our battles. So children will think, what is the battle I'm facing? Uh, you know, or, you know, thank God that Jesus went to Zacchaeus' house and he changed and the whole city was happy. But how is it going to help the child? You know, um, so get the child to write down, you know, what are some of the difficulties that you're going through? Uh, what are some of the giants you are facing? Are you all face having a Goliath in your life? So they'll think, oh, no, we don't have a Goliath. Means Goliath means a giant. A giant is something that is big that you think that you can't conquer. Like, you know, you can't... Uh, uh, study math or you find uh, a language difficult or science you can't remember things when you your exam is like a giant your test is like a giant when you have to go up on stage you know that is like a giant like a mountain that you face so write down your giants and you know uh, tell them uh, you know truths from God's word that speaks against those giants you know, get them to write it so that they can keep reading those truths of God's word and then you know speak it so they say next time you know when you are uh, going up on stage or you're very scared or you're facing a test or exam uh, or you have to do a, a, a homework or study math or a subject that you find difficult just close your eyes and say god you know you're uh, you my you're my helper uh, you will help me you'll give me the wisdom you'll give me the skill just like you gave uh, david you will give it to me god and uh, you know if sometimes children are uh, being punished for doing something wrong with school or with their parents at home. Uh, they can say, God, uh, Jesus, you are in my life. You can help me just like you help Zacchaeus change 
uh, help me to change in this area. I don't want to be stubborn, arrogant, disobedient, back answering, stealing, and I'm sorry, change my heart. So, you know, just how they can so write down things that you're facing, the challenges, your weaknesses, your uh, the bad things that you do, and start praying about it. And, uh, you know, so this is the way that you're helping children to apply what they have learned. Now, all of our children, if we, uh, uh, who, are, uh, who have become adults now, or teenagers, you know, adults in adult church, if you ask them, they will kind of narrate all of these stories uh, but, you know, ask them about those truths or whether those truths have translated into practical living into their lives. It's it's very sad that many of them uh, it has not because, you know, basically when they were children, uh, 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 we as children's church ministers or Sunday school teachers failed to help them to apply what they have learned in their uh, lives. So what we do at APC is we have um, in the children's workbook or in the teacher's uh, uh, curriculum, the manual for teachers, you know, uh, help children to write down, you know, in specifically these two areas, what they have learned, you know, how they can uh, apply this, uh, what are the giants they face, how they can overcome their giants, uh, you know, uh, what are uh, the challenges, the bad things that they're doing, uh, uh, what uh, the areas they need God to help them uh, and then you know practice it this week uh, and come at the end of the, uh, the week on Saturday they have to write how they practice it you know uh, and come back and share with the class how God helped them so you know we're basically helping children to you know practically uh, work on uh, these things and how God's word can permeate and flood everything they do. Second Timothy 3.15, Paul reminds Timothy that from childhood, uh, you have been acquainted with the sacred uh, writings which are able to make you wise for salvation through faith in Christ Jesus. So look at what Paul is saying. Paul is saying that, you know, um, uh, hey, Timothy, uh, from a very young age, you were, uh, you know, acquainted, means you're very familiar, accustomed to, aware, informed about the sacred writings, about scripture, the Old Testament scripture, you know, and that was able to help you uh, and make you wise for salvation and your faith in Christ. Uh, Jesus. So Paul is basically reminding Timothy, you know, even now, you know, fall back on God's word. That is going to give you the strength, the grace to enable you to accomplish what you have been entrusted to uh, at the churches in um, Ephesus. So, you know, uh, keep the word of God central. Teach them even as uh, you've, you know, if you've taught them a lesson uh, on Sunday, on a specific topic or specific point, whether it's faith, it's the word of God, how to use the word of God, how to declare the word of God, or it's, a, uh, it's about, uh, you know, who they are in Christ, whatever point that you're teaching them. You know, just make a few Bible references, list it out for the, the seven days of the week, you know, or six days of the week, and get them to read those passages and just write, you know, what, uh, uh, who they are in Christ from what, uh, in this uh, in this uh, verse that you've given to them or the scripture passage on that day or if you're teaching them about the nature of God the character the attributes what nature of God did they uh, find so basically children you're teaching children to you know uh, see and learn from scripture when they're reading scriptures not just okay it's like a chore it's a ritual that they're doing but also how to look for these um, diamonds in God's word that can minister to their lives and then also how they can apply that uh, truth about who they are in Christ or uh, you know uh, a deck, uh, uh, what God's word declares about them how they're going to apply it in that day how they've applied it how they can apply it uh, and how God's word has become a reality or the truth of who they are in Christ or the nature of God how it becomes a reality in their own lives so we're basically teaching children on meditation how to read God's word you know just take out those, draw those truths, those diamonds from God's word and how to apply it in their everyday life. So it becomes just, you know, part of their uh, living, their lifestyle, even when they uh, grow up. So just narrating mere stories or narratives from God's word to children is not enough to guide them. They need the word of God and only God's word can change their uh, hearts. Just like to give you um, 
uh, an example you know i'm writing the i was writing the curriculum for our children's church uh, uh, on the word of god and uh, i was reading various testimonies about how people use god's word to bring about healing even when the doctors gave up you know just to just uh, spoke those words it is just a kind of you know, those words they just didn't declare it for the sake of declaring to get healing but it it just kind of eating god's word meditating on it chewing it just became so much part of their fiber of their entire being that it just brought miraculous healing in the body the doctors were shocked to see the healing it was a testimony of one man uh you know uh, uh another testimony uh, that i remember you know uh, writing uh, for the curriculum for children is that uh, in two different schools, uh, you know, two teachers um, uh, uh, in these two different classes had children who were uh, children with special needs or uh, learning disabilities. Uh, so the two teachers in these two different schools who never met, you know, um, they every morning they got their children to just uh, speak uh, a verse from God's the God's word, the Bible. Every every day they were just teaching them, uh, you know. Uh, a scripture verse and children is narrated and they would just say it because and not knowing you know the uh, the changes it's bringing in them but these this words these scripture passages that they were learning that they were saying every morning was bringing such healing in their uh in their minds in their learning disabilities uh, in their lifestyle in their behavior that the parents were shocked so the parents are coming to school and saying you know uh, hey what is the teacher especially doing with our children that we can see such remarkable difference and remarkable change and uh, you know uh, it was the same pattern she was using to teach the children all of those um, learning uh, styles and everything was the same but it was they found out it was just the scripture verses that this teacher was just telling them to speak out and teaching them just brought such miraculous change in these children's uh, behavior their relationship with their parents that uh, parents found it easier to relate with them teach them uh, you know train them in their different habits they were small kids and uh, you know at the end of the school year you know these children were written off as uh, children with no learning uh, you know, they did not have learning uh, disabilities they were like just normal children so i mean this is a testimony that you know, uh, I read on uh, on Google and uh, just so amazed at uh, even even with children with learning disabilities, just narrating those words. They didn't know they just children just saying those words. So you know, uh, uh, just teaching children God's word, uh, getting them to memorize at a very young age is so important, so that they can just grow in uh, 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 you know in that. And when they grow back, you know, these scripture passages just come back. Uh, to memory so you know every time i'm facing challenges every time i go through uh, situations difficulties and i'm saying god what are you speaking to me what are you telling me uh you know uh, what is your promise it's just scripture verses that just comes to my mind and all of these i learned it in vbs sunday school the bible matches the quiz programs that i've attended uh because i had such a strong uh, uh foundation in my formative years in my childhood years in attending uh children's church and uh, vbs and i just thank god for all those faithful children's church ministers sunday school ministers my parents who just fed us with god's word that is just bringing so much life and health just one verse boom comes like a rhema word just lifts you your spirit up just gives you guidance gives you such wonderful assurance and it's just so uh supernatural just so uh wonderful so the second uh uh, you know, essential foundation for children's based ministry is it should be Bible saturated. The third thing is children's ministry must be gospel driven. You know, we must be intentional in proclaiming the gospel to children and to their families. Uh, Romans 1 16 says, for I'm not ashamed of the gospel for it's the power of God unto salvation for everyone who uh, believes. And uh, uh, Jesus commanded us in Mark chapter 16, verse 15, go into all the world and proclaim the gospel to the whole of uh, creation. So uh, uh, every 
every time we meet, you know, we, uh, share the gospel message with the children, uh, you know, ensure that they know what salvation is, what they have received, uh, get them, keep reiterating it so that uh, they're learning, they're growing in it. You know, children uh, just easily accept Jesus as the Lord and Savior because the teacher says and they just believe. But we need to work on that. Some of them. Uh, just pray the salvation prayer because they don't want to go to hell. They want to go to heaven. Uh, uh, some of them prayed because, you know, they don't want Satan to trouble them or bother them in their lives. They just want blessings. But it's important to teach children the whole truth about salvation. That salvation is not just making Jesus their Lord, but, you know, uh, sorry, not just making Jesus the Savior of their life, just accepting him as a Savior, but also making him Lord of their lives. Now, this is the aspect that is missed out very often. You know, many people, even adults, they receive Jesus as their Savior, you know, they just want to be saved of their sins, uh, delivered, uh, free from everything, but they don't make him Lord, which means they don't surrender and yield every aspect or area of their lives, the faculties of their life to uh, the sovereign control and the will of God. So it's important for us to teach children the whole truth of salvation, that it's making Jesus not just the Savior to be saved from our sins so that we can go to heaven when we die, or receive his blessing, be his children, enjoy everything, but also to make him Lord because that is the whole truth about salvation. It is making Jesus the Lord and Savior of uh, uh, of their lives. And also how this truth translates uh, out in their everyday lives. We need to teach them how they need to live that salvation experience, uh, you know, uh, through uh, the choices that they make, their behavior, the way they live, and everything that they uh, do. And the last thing, the last four essential foundation for children's space ministry is that children's ministry must minister to the whole family. Okay. Um, just like uh, say you were saying, you know, we, uh, uh, you know, it, it family also needs to be involved in teaching the children, in ensuring that children are learning God's word, uh, not just learning it or reading the Bible, but also making it uh, part of their everyday lives, living out that truth. So, you know, uh, it's important and we need to recognize that God has called parents uh, to be the guardians, the custodians, the primary faith nurturers of their children. Uh, so, you know, uh, we as children's church ministers you know we must partner with parents to assist them uh, in helping them to fulfill this calling because this calling is on their lives, this responsibility, this mandate is on their lives. We're just partnering with, the, uh, partnering with them to help them uh, to accomplish this. Uh, so children's uh, church ministry should also help, uh, you know, uh, parents uh, how they can train their children in godliness, in uh, righteousness, in, in right um, living. So, you know, uh, one thing that uh, some of the couple of things that we do at APC Children's Church is we have a WhatsApp group of uh, the children in our class, uh, the parents. So we just inform the, ch uh, the parents a, uh, a small, uh, give them a small liner, one or two liners of what we taught them and what, ch uh, you know, how children can, uh, you know, uh, uh, practice it in their everyday lives so you know um, ensure that children are applying it so the the parent had this has this in, in the back of their mind so you know when the child is going through something say hey remember what you learned in a uh, children's church on sunday you know this god can do this you know you learned you need to do this uh, how you can respond to the situation so the children are reminded and the parents also know so this just helps uh, the parents to apply uh, get the children to apply it we also have parent teachers meeting you know uh, telling parents what we are teaching the children, uh, what is how they can, um, uh, you know, be part of what we are doing. So, you know, tell them that the workbooks have, uh, uh, you know, uh, a take home activity. It has uh, application uh, and, you know, how the children are going to apply what they have learned. So just look at it, get them to apply in the week and get them to fill up the uh, in the box at the end of the week on Saturday night, how they have applied what they have learned. Uh, also, memory verse, uh, the WhatsApp message also has a memory verse, you know, and tell, we tell the parents, this is a memory verse, uh, you know, and, uh, uh, 
and also we have different uh, Bible quiz, uh, different okay, uh, you know, different activities where parents are also involved, and all Bible based uh, based on what we're teaching them. So uh, you know, just helps in reiterating the learning, gets the parents to get the children to learn for the Bible quiz or the Bible match or participate in that activity which is uh, uh, on the topic that they are learning so children uh, can learn uh, better and can be helped as well okay okay we'll stop here uh, anyone has any questions any questions uh, yes pastor um, can you hear me yes Christopher now, I, I was just, uh, you know, while you're going through the lecture, I was uh, also going through the notes mm -hmm. and uh, you shared with us. And um, there seemed to be a little bit of difference in the notes and in the sense that uh, uh, there's, there's a mention about, uh, you know, five essential foundations. Yes, yes, and, uh, I, I noticed that. Thank you. Yeah, the other thing is that I think the point number three has been repeated twice. Um, uh, I'm not sure which one is, is the right one. Um, so if you could just have a look at that and, and let us know what are okay. the changes. Or so the first thing is uh, children's ministry must be God-centered. Second one is children's ministry must be Bible-saturated. Third thing is children's ministry must be gospel-driven. Fourth is children's ministry must minister to the whole family. And the fifth one is children's ministry is about serving kids. So. Hello? Uh, yes, yes, I'm here. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. No, uh, so uh, is, uh, uh, yeah. point number three, I think, has been repeated twice. One is a smaller okay. section, one is a bigger section. So, if we just have a look mm -hmm. at that, please, Pastor. Okay, I will. Yes, yeah. Thank and you. it's five essential foundations. Sorry. Yeah. Thank you, Christopher. I'll uh, I'll uh, make a note of that, and then I'll change the uh, notes accordingly. Okay. Thank you. Anyone else has any questions? Okay, no questions. If there are no questions, we'll end class and uh, see you all for uh, uh, the class on First Timothy. Okay, see you all soon. Thank you for joining class. Have a blessed day, everyone. God bless.